the Vogue Ball and other events like it are like dead sassy. You've got to bring it all the time. You've got to be the hottest, the fiercest. You've got to bring the most fire. You've got to give the most energy. It's addictive. Vogue is addictive. Any Vogue Ball virgin is quickly broken in. Quickly. My name's Darren Suarez and I'm from Liverpool. I am the artistic director of House of Suarez and also the executive producer of the House of Suarez Vogue Ball. So we're all singing from the same sheet. The official House of Suarez Vogue Ball was first set up in 2010. It brought together a new flavour of performance into Liverpool bringing together institutes such as Lippa, other dance colleges, as well as the community, as well as some drag queens, as well as dancers from every field, all coming together to embrace the Vogue culture of the Vogue Ball, which is a runway event. This year's Vogue Ball, it's grown so much that so many people have come in that it's just, it's almost grown into like a, I don't want to say corporate event, but like a big, big event. It welcomes everyone, because in the, back in the day in 2010, I said that it was bit more underground wasn't it the people that knew about it would come because i never heard of it before and then got invited last minute i didn't even know who darren was the first one just blew my socks off and every single year it just gets better and better because people get more relaxed houses keep entering they go right okay we've got to beat last year we've got to beat last year and it just becomes just this amazing electric energy in the room phenomenal football's built up of five categories they consist of fantasy, which is based on costume. Solo, which obviously speaks for itself, which is solo performance. Realness, which is about your alter ego, whatever the theme is. Sex Siren, obviously hot bodies, specimens, all flaunting it on the catwalk. And then we finish off with the catalyst of the whole thing, which is choreography. Choreography brings together the styles of anything that's hip-hop with Vogue, theatre, costume and theme. It's all different, it's not one specific. You can't explain it. Yeah. You can't explain you can't it. Explain it's just something yeah. different, it's something else. It's, it's outrageous. Like it. It's absolutely outrageous. It's completely and utterly like... Like you watch it and it's like, oh my god, like it actually is, like it's mind blowing. It is. It's a life. It is, it's a sort of overwhelming. Normal like dance shows that you go to, you're just sort of, you'll sit in the audience and you're just very quiet and you sit and watch, whereas the Vogue Ball and other events like it are like more interactive. You can get involved, they get you up on stage. So it's like a more comfortable environment, so there's mm -hmm. like, it's like nicer to come to. There's a fierceness, but it's a friendly fierceness, there's a competition. It's a healthy, healthy competition. It's not like a bitchy competition, but it's a really healthy competition. There's a competition. With the solo categories and choreography, I expect everyone who enters those categories to be competent and to be hungry to win a competition. Especially on solo battles, that's always, it's always nerve wracking. Always very, very noisy. <laughs> and sometimes crew battles as well. Everyone knows when you're on that stage, you are going to do what you have got to do to win for your own house or backstage. It's yeah, you're my meeting. Like from previous balls, people know each other. Everyone's just friendly with each other anyway. If another house I do something say. there, like, and they do something sick, you, you cheer for yeah, them. Like, and yes, you're like, that yes, was boss. that yeah. was slime yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, you are, that was slime. It's a weird one because we're all like family as well, because we, you've got your regular houses now, like you've got Cards, Suarez, Lippa, Rare, Chocolate. We all know each other, all the dancers know each other, they all train together in other places or they've danced together before. We're in a more like brother and sister houses than 
like competing houses. You come off stage and everyone's like, oh my God, like, well done, it's amazing. Yeah, like it is competitive in a sense that when we were in rehearsals, it was like, come on, we need to be the best that we can be. And we don't want to go out there and be an absolute show. But when you're there, like even in the little sections, like fantasy, because I was second on and I had people who I was against as such, like helping me to go up those stairs because I was in a huge dress and it was really hard. And everyone just backstage, everyone's sort of walking around, like looking at everyone's costumes and almost praising each other. I've got to admit, selfishly, I'm in bits when Solo's on. I've got that competitive side somewhere. So I will be always watching Solo because I've, I always want House of Suarez to win. It's my ego. I've got daughters in the house who are battling with Vogue. They've got to represent and slay. So much talent, honestly. So we have decided. Judges score something in. And the winner is... So even though there is that element of competition, it's still a very family orientated celebration of diversity and weirdness and just freakness and it's, it's nuts. It's like Paris Fashion Week on crack. You know in the realness section, the battle mm -hmm. between Jack and Will, <laughs> how crazy was that? It was so crazy, but I thought he was going to deck him on stage. I literally thought he's going to swing for him in a minute. But like, on stage there fighting and then as soon as I come off it's all hugs and kisses all around like well done. Every single person that went on that stage got an applause, got a cheer, everyone was on their feet. It's just an all round really good night and a really good environment. Everyone was like cheering and stuff so I was like oh, trying to concentrate on where I was in the song. Couldn't hear my music start up. We have the host of all hostesses called Ricky B. Blair. He's a legend in his own right. I call him the corset to the ball. He pulls the strings that make everything that I've created come together. It was cheaper than a video. Yeah. Download that, you guys. And then what he does is he explains it to the audience in, in their ways, in their terms, what they're about to engage in and what they're about to sort of witness. It's all about the realness. And I know in this city you understand what it means. The atmosphere will rise to fever pitch. And you sort of goes, ah, and gets all into it. You can look at people in the audience, like making eye contact with them and like flirting with them on stage and it makes it so much more enjoyable. It makes it more real rather than just like, oh, I'm putting on a show. It's like everyone gets involved, especially when you see people like standing up and cheering and stuff. Like that, that's impossible to not encourage you to go on and like smash it even more. <laughs> I think if there wasn't an audience that was like that, on the sugar ball. It's just the whole atmosphere changes. They let loose, they just basically go crazy. It's like a little dirty secret. You've got people from all walks of life, from sponsors, from the city, local businesses, to people's grandmothers, to dance students, to randoms who just want that alternative night. Everyone who goes there, walking the, under this veil of, they have a respect for each other and everyone just talks and mixes and has a laugh. I think the camping fairness look sugary. piece this year is called The Hunt. It has to be something more than just catwalk, it has to have like a little story going on, a bit of darkness, a bit of humour. The piece at the beginning needs to open up people's minds for what the ball entails. Every year I'll choreograph a professional piece that will embrace all the different categories within it. I think that's key when it comes down to educating people about culture of the Vogue style and also educate people about how to open up their creativity and their imagination. The opening pieces is key and will always be key to the next three hours of bonkers.
<laughs> the hunt is um, Darren Suarez is twisted my mind. <laughs> I know it's a twisted piece, but you can take something really good out of it. You've got to be yourself, stick true to who you are, go out there, get what you want, you've got it, done. I think it's the hunt for survival, maybe. It's a battle, yeah, you're zoning in on that person and you're gonna show them what you've got. I'm bringing it, kind of, kind of thing. It's like being in a pantomime. You're in a different world, you know, with set around you and it's kind of an escape for them. They're in a different world and I think that's what you know, drives the energy from them. I knew I wanted to pull out some famous characters that were actually associated to S Sweetie Land, as we know it. You've got the child catcher, which was a guy who uses sweet to get what he wants. So there's that sugar sweetness. And then you've got the Monkey Ball Kid, which is clearly a sweet. But then you've got Willy Wonka, who's controlling all the chocolate in the world. And that's his oomph amplified, like, in persona. Milky Bar Kid's on the end of the stage, like, taking the pee a bit, like... Oh, look at him and his heel. We have, like, a little patty cake battle. We just slay each other. Um, it ends in a really hilarious moment where I go to slap him and he catches it, and then he bitch slaps me back, like, Wah! and then we both death drop and it just looks sick. Me and Willy Wonka are not dead, so the child character does not like that at all, so she comes after both of us. She's, like, this superhuman mad-ass bitch, and then she kills us both. The mother of the child catcher like takes us in and swallows us up. We we keep them so that they're ours to eat. We've made this opening piece to show like this is what House of Suarez can do, this is what we're capable of and give it a bit more um, depth. So it's kind of like us setting our standards and saying this is our interpretation of the sugar ball and we're going with all these different crazy ideas. Making it really theatrical because sugar, sugar makes you hyped, doesn't it? So we've got to get the crowd hyped. This is how we put glitter on. Cake my jelly stays on for hours. Sometimes days. Working with Vogas, movement is most important with making costume. There's like splits, backflips, twisted contortions. So that's kind of the first initial process that we go through. With the child catcher, we were thinking of Harley Quinn. And I kind of really liked that image. Very candy cane, quite dark, a bit twisted. You know she's going to ruin you. It's kind of hard to harness what kind of character I want to go with because I can either go with like the sexual kind of lure in them in and you can be like Ooh, cherries and everything edible can be more of a, like something you can play with or I could go with really freaky where I freak people out and like turn my face into like a bit of a contortion and go for them or there's another one where I can be really childlike and you know innocent and it, kind of struggling to find a medium at the moment. The Milky Bar Kid, we just like his character. I wanted to keep him traditional. There was no kind of twist. Luke is perfect for that because he's dead sweet and, you know, and he can turn it out when it comes to catwalk. I'm the camp one. Like, I add that camp factor to the whole piece so everyone can stop being so tense and go, ah, oh, the Milky Bar Kid. Willy Wonka. I kind of wanted him a little bit twisted between Willy Wonka and Prince. I want purple and gold with big buttons. Take the arms off, but still have an element of arm by giving him rather large cuffs. And he has a cane, which is quite heavy because of the doorknob on the end. Willy Wonka. <laughs> Willy. Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> the modelly one of the lot in the opening piece. I come out and I'm like all sassy with my cane and my hat, giving you supermodel all this with my co with my co um, contour to death. But Oompa Loompas just love me, like they're probably like fangirling me on stage, like, oh my god, I love it. So I'm um, all arrogant, really. The Oompa Loompas. What we wanted to do, what the, the essence of it, we wanted to make it a certain type of Scouse girl. They all kind of look the same. We put them in Scouse pyjamas with sheep on, pink pyjamas. Uh, lime green stilettos and a wind up on the back. We could make them into like wind up toys. Well, Scouse girls like to wind each other up. There's only a certain category of, the, let's not say that all the poor girls look the same because they don't, but there is a certain element of their umpa lumpers, paint them orange like they've been on the sunbed too long, give them big Scouse brow eyebrows, uh, candy lips, all that kind of look. With the mother, I 
give birth on stage, I have two nurses, one gives me an epidural so I can't feel my legs. My daughter comes out and she wants to feed mother. My dress is like a cage, there's like, there's lights inside, it all flashing so it's all a bit twisted. And I open it up, kind of like a mouth, to entice the kids. I took photographs of old, like, board games, so you've got Kaplum, Mousetrap, Cop It, Stay Alive, and there's like dolls in there with their heads set off and sweets dangling from inside. And then I go over and actually, and catch them. So it's like, we, we keep them. Greedy bitch over here. <laughs> <laughs> nom nom nom. Nom nom. The house of nom nom. <laughs> Must have been the fact it was a sweet theme. Everyone just went all out. Some of the costumes I was absolutely astounded by. How can you come up with stuff like that? It's so creative. Like it's, I think it's such a great thing to be part of because you can see what their thoughts are and it's like watching it all come to life. Usually I conceptualise something and I'll take something from a film or from a TV programme or from like a, a character in, in something. What I actually did was I took loads of elements from different sugar orientated themes, pantomimes, circuses, and I created uh, my own storyboard. The piece is the war between the gingerbread army and the sugar plum fairy army. I wanted to do the gender twist as well. So the leader of the sugar plum fairy army is a boy in heels and the leader of the gingerbread army is a girl. And then we have the lollipop lady. She's kind of like this ghettoized creature, goddess. <laughs> Sex Island. There's a band called C, but it's by, by loads of people. It's the Zeppelin, the Zeppelin one. <laughs> but it was, you know, the haven't mint, the black and white yeah. ones, fun books. That's what it was. I had like a little bracelet made out of the sweets. That's what the black and white was. What were the boys to me? Zeppelin's. <laughs> And you was the zebra person? No, I wasn't. You was? I wasn't. To be fair, I thought you were zebras as well. So we wanted to do something quite dark. So we took a sweet toxic waste sweet, you know the ones you get in the little tubs. And we wanted to do like a kid's sugar rush. But because we were doing toxic waste, we wanted to make it quite dark. And we almost did it like a drug trip. So Charlie was the little boy in the clown costume. And we were almost like the demons in his head that is released when he takes the sweet, you know? So he walked on and we all had the toxic waste test tubes, but they were all sherbet and we were throwing them like into the audience. And Charlie took one, so he wanted it to be, so people could have it in the audience and be like, oh, what's he taking? I'm having the same thing. And then almost visualize the trip. We wanted to make sure that we didn't lose the sweet theme which is why we had those in some of the songs that we chose. To be honest, I don't really know what it's meant to be, because it was originally Wilhelmina Wonka, Willy Wonka's beard, and then it was Candy Floss, and then it was Marshmallows. So I think it was Wilhelmina Wonka featuring Candy Floss, but it threw Marshmallows, so I just think, <laughs> I just think it was everything, to be honest. <laughs> I've eaten Fluffy. Paris Spain was one of the first things that I watched in the 80s. It did inspire me. It inspired me to actually have my own Vogue ball. This year's theme is the Sugar Ball. You are all going to leave at two phase by the end. The original balls from like the 80s, 90s, they are very underground. I mean, some of them are in like community centres, you know, there's, there's no budget at all. What House of Suarez has done is given a high art element to it, adding more theatre. It's definitely a platform for people like me who are professional choreographers that haven't necessarily got access to be able to produce that kind of work. Because there's no holds barred, you can do basically what you want in terms of the choreography category. You know, you can go as, as, as rude as you want, you can go as, as dark as you want. It's a blank canvas that you can do, there's no restriction, which is fantastic. I wanted my vocals to sort of represent me as an artist a growing artist, not just doing Vogue, but understanding classical ballet, understanding choreography, bringing those combinations together to actually help and support a wider audience and diversifying the people that we have on board. What you've got here is choreographers, designers, artists, you know, all getting involved. So the level of work that is being produced and being put onto the runway just takes it to that high art level. A lot of people have different opinions so that they think Madonna created Vogue. What Madonna did was actually capitalise on it and actually made it well known. Any Vogue should be happy for that. It's made it accessible. It's also made it commercial enough for dancers to embrace it a little bit more and maybe get into a class and learn the style and stuff. 
if you do Vogue, you notice things on TV that are a part of Vogue styles and you sort of notice it when you start getting into it and more researching it and seeing what it's about and the different kind of movements. You start noticing different things on TV like a music video you'll see a Vogue movie and go, okay, like if you didn't know about Vogue, you'd be like, oh, it's just a dance move. You can't even express what it's like to someone because there's nothing that compares. It's so, it's so sexy and I don't even know, like, I can't even think of words right now. I think you either get it or you don't. Like, you either, the first time you do it, you're like, yeah, you, you get it and you like it, or yeah, you, you don't it. get it. You can probably, you can learn, you know what I mean? You can do it. To this day, I still feel a bit like a newbie when I see people, but I don't know. It's, it's nice to welcome new people in. I've seen so many generations of lipper dancers come before, like before, and then they've all gone and graduated, and like the next ones come in and they come and dance with us, and it's nice to meet different people. <laughs> If you think you can't do it, then you will probably be able to do it. It's very hard, it's like very nitty, but as soon as you get the hang of it, as soon as you get that liking for it and that addiction, you just push yourself and push yourself and want to do it more and just want to train yourself. It's addictive. Vogue is addictive. The Vogue ball is for anybody. You can get involved with the Vogue ball at any stage as long as you're at a certain age. The dance element to a Vogue, I personally think, is actually one of the hardest styles of Vogue if you want to have it as discipline. If it's something that you want to try, everyone should try it, at least, just to see, because you'll be surprised about what your body can actually do. It's not so much about the moves, it's about how you execute those moves and the attitude behind it.